Well, hello everyone. So, welcome to another uh, devlog uh, update on Heroga Vallis, and I just wanted to kind of give a quick update on where I am. Uh, not really a whole lot to show right now, other than this level. Um, been extremely busy at work lately, and I haven't had a whole lot of time, of free time, just to kind of sit and program things. But I've gotten a, f a few, a few things done. Um, I have about six levels finished, and all of them are clumped toward the beginning. So what I would like to do is sort of complete that whole part of the game, uh, tutorials, intros, and all, and maybe make a demo. I mean, that'd be great uh, if I could maybe get a few people to play it and kind of let me know what, what works, what doesn't. Uh, I can tell you my biggest concern to be controls, because I want to make sure those are, are good. Um, and really just being able to sit down and see people play the game would be best. Of course, with COVID, uh, that's probably not going to be a, a good idea. Um, but maybe I can talk someone to me, like recording themselves playing the game or something and let me know what where they get frustrated or what they find works pretty well. Um, but this update, I want to talk about AI, and here's an opportunity to kind of show off this level. Again, not that I want to show off every single level, but, you know, I would like there to be some surprises, but at the same time, you know, this is still early in development, and things could change, and I'm just kind of proud of the way this one came out. This is a, a very vertical level, and it's particularly challenging, uh, both going up and down, which is something I want to show off. Uh, let me zoom in here. And I'm going to take us through this. I'm going to go into a mortal mode, though, because I am not that confident <laughs> that I can do this while I'm talking to you all. But my next big project, let me get the knife here. I, by the way, this, this is a little detail. I wanted to show this off real quick. Like, see how you know, the character is standing under the ledge there, but when you jump straight up, she goes back a little bit, and you can grab those ledges. And now you can also go down. Of course, there's one bug I haven't quite fixed yet. Um, you could go down, yeah, the other way. Um, <laughs> work in progress. So, uh, what I've been wanting to work on next is AI. And the problem with AI, as we, as we make our way up this tower, I will kind of um, talk a little bit about what you're seeing here, how it works, you know, behind the scenes. That guy won't die. Okay, so how this works is these guys are using the old animation manager that the uh, player character was using. And that is kind of a problem for, for a variety of, of reasons. One is just inconsistency. But two, and maybe this is just kind of a fault of my own. Sometimes I think I try to think too big. Um, one of my thoughts was when it came to AI is to program virtual robots and kind of go the whole whole distance with that. Uh, let me. Ooh, this is a. Well, oh, stuck. I was gonna say this is a noisy area. Let me get out of here first. But see, if I wasn't immortal, this would not happen. Oh, I'm gonna have to. To take the turret down. Snipe off the. There. <laughs> okay. Um, as I was saying, I sometimes, I think I think a little too big picture. Um, why make you know just a simple AI when I can make a virtual robot? Here's a switch. And that's probably not the most appropriate. I mean, for one thing, it's way way over complicated than what I need. Uh, and second, when you have general systems like that, it, it's just kind of hard to debug. You know, when something goes wrong and you have a complex machine, they have to fix it. So, I'm, since I need to redo a lot of the NPC and AI code anyway, I might as well fix some long-standing problems like this guy. So, we're down here. He can't see you. The way this is implemented is there is an AI behavior that sends events out um, basically when everything's detected. And kind of the, the model here was the brain reacting to stimuli. And 
the problem with this, this is it's not really illustrated in this level, but if one of these triggers gets missed, then it kind of breaks. Yeah, you have not had the NPCs, you know, wander off edges, or I'll see if I can get this to happen in this level. I don't think it will. But another thing that can happen is they kind of get like they're frozen and they'll keep walking in place. Of course, the axe guy can't figure out. That, yeah, like, like he's kind of stuck. Now, you can't see what he's stuck on, but if I showed you this in the scene editor, I'll get him out of the way, there's a little trigger here. And it's invisible to everyone except the NPC, but when he's standing on it, it tells him to stop. And if he gets stuck on it, then he can't possibly move off of it. Trying to debug that, you know, simple problem has proven to be a kind of a challenge because you know, I don't have to kill him. I mean, the virtual machine that runs this is just too complicated to make that easy to fix. I mean, it's the same problem I have with the animation manager. It becomes too difficult to manage. And then when something goes wrong, where do you start when it comes to fixing it? So by the way, uh, the strategy here is, you know, those little triggers under the triangle signs. Um, the rightmost trigger hits or activates the rightmost turret. So if you kill that one first, that gives you enough room to step back and get a good running jump. You can get over here. Now, I need to reprogram this so it looks like one big room because this is probably not fair. Like the NPC is just off the edge and since this is a room-based camera, you can't actually, oh, there's two of them. You can't actually see it. By the way, the, the little numbers that show the hit points, that's a skill. Um, let's see, I messed this up already. <laughs> uh, I'm going to show in a moment. I'm going to save. Now, you normally can't do that, but you know, that's just, I have cheating mode on here. So, I'm take that out. Oh, take that out. Try again. Okay, oh, I activated that one. Well, See, I have something quick I can kill these guys with. Okay, let me get him. So yeah, there's a strategy to getting through this tower, and I really like this level the more I think about it. It does have its quirks, and it does need some polishing, but I think it works pretty well. Uh, I'll show you, there's a little surprise at the end of it here. This is actually a boss level, and what I've decided to do is have every... Like there's a, you know, an act one, act two, act three. I should probably say zone one. So I think having the word act may be a little bit confusing. So there's an act one, act two, act three. And these are different zones. I think the third level in each zone would probably be good for a boss level. There. I have no energy points right now. So these guys take a long time to knock down. Like the AI part, like the senses work pretty well. So I can knock him over the edge. Nah, uh, I can't. Okay, like the the senses work pretty well. It's, it's the reactions that become problematic. I don't need the heart. So what I'm going to replace this with, since I'm getting close to the good part, I'm going to stop talking about AI. So what I'm going to replace this with is... Um, an estate manager that I have for Marika and rather than having brain states and animation states I'm just going to merge into one system and, and trying to keep things relatively simple so a state in this case may be a, a set of animations but the state manager can manage or the state in the state manager can manage that but for NPCs rather than having states for specific actions like the player, uh, I have different AI modes. So, for example, for some of these NPCs, there can be a patrol mode or a pursue mode or something like that. And then each individual state will manage the animations. With the with the player, I want to say it's almost overcomplicated. And let me point out one thing here: when you turn around like that, 
you're actually cycling through two states. There's a separate turn state like that where she's turning. And then there's a start and then run and a stop. So it's actually like four to five states. And you're, it's constantly transferring these. I could have made it much simpler and just have a run state and have that run state manage the different animations. I'm it's probably fortunate I chose this because this way makes it easier to fine tune the way inputs behave. Like for example, making it so you can't fall off the edge when you're turning around. That gives you a very nice grace period for turning. So I'm kind of fortunate in that regard, but I think for the NPCs, since I don't have to try and predict what the human player is, is going to be doing, I can get away with simpler systems. So. Hopefully in a future update, probably not the next one, I'll have that system running. I can show off how that works. And if you are a developer, I can show you a little bit about how I coded that and maybe how you could use some of those strategies in your own games. Uh, for now, though, let me show you what's behind that door. Okay, I'm going to save here. And we're going to have a little battle. So this boss, um, this boss is a generator. But it's not the difficult part. We have these guys coming out here. This can be a challenge. This is actually a play on that. When I was testing the hitbox, I had set up some arenas. And this is sort of a play on the arena. These guys come out at random. Uh, because I'm immortal right now, I don't really have to use tricks to manage my resources. In this case, you know, move points, but it, it can be challenged and it, it really tests your ability to really manage multiple enemies, I'd say. Um, that's not the surprise, though. That's just what this room's about. And there was a, a show I watched that kind of gave advice for, you know, building RPGs and kind of a way to think about bosses. Again, I wish I knew the source for this. I don't have the source with me, or I give it credit. It's just, it's just what I remember. Um, but the advice was to think of NPC bosses like a test. So this tests the player's ability to be able to proceed to the next part of the game. If they're underpowered, they're going to fail. But that's actually a good thing, because that means they are not going to... Yeah, I'm going to pause this while I finish my thought here. Uh, that means they're not going to get in a position where they're now stuck in a part of the game and they can't go on. Kind of the same idea actually is um, tests in a class. Um, you know, there are some courses that are sometimes known as um, weed out courses. Um, the university I went to, one of the universities I went to actually had a couple of those, and they actually serve a role. If you're in a major that you're just not suited for the weed out class is going to steer you in a different direction before you invest more time on that path so even though if, if you have you know if your dream is to be you know in a certain career and that gets crushed by a weed out course um, you know that's obviously you know can be a hard hard time but it at least lets you know that this is not what you're interested in and to find something else before it's too late to really change it. So it serves a role. Kind of the same idea here. I want to make sure that the player doesn't go on and get locked in the next part of the game when they're way underpowered. At least that's, that was the idea. And I thought that was good advice. Okay, so surprise time. Okay, so I'm actually really pleased with myself how this came out. And, but I want to talk about how I designed this to be a little bit more player friendly. So what happened? I'm going to turn immortal mode off here. So you see the 36 and the hit points. It's now I'm, I'm mortal again. Um, the way I designed this, you have to make it to the bottom. Like when you go through that door, there's a countdown that's going to start. You have to get to the bottom of the level within two minutes. Now, to make this more player friendly, when you kill the generator, it's about to blow up. You see how it says press space to save? I give the player the chance, if they want to, to save here. I don't want to make them save. 
because if they die, especially if they save themselves in a position where they aren't sure how to handle the timer, I don't want them to sort of like save when it's impossible to, well, I can't prevent this, but I want to make it hard for them to save when it's impossible for them to win. Like if they have 15 seconds left and they're still at the top of the tower. Okay, so we're saved. We're going to see if we can get to the bottom of this tower in two minutes. This is kind of tough. Oh, I forgot. It's still 1 minute and 50 seconds. Never mind. And already messed that one up. <laughs> Oops. Well, made it to the bottom. We'll try this again. Okay. Try number two. To get down here. I don't need the heart. Missed. <laughs> try number three. All right, see if I can do this. Oh, I don't need the heart, dang it. Oh, I got the heart anyway. I say, this is tough, but there are a few things you can do, if you're clever, to make this easier. First thing you can do is don't wait for the elevator, because you're gonna have to waste a lot of time waiting for the elevator. Just go across here, and then I probably should have killed these guys from the start, because now they're wasting time. And man, he is really, Kicking her back. Okay, can I go down? The, uh, I'm in the wrong room. Well, we'll try. Nope. <laughs> I lost track of where I was. Try number four. Okay, I'll maybe give this one more try. Okay, moving across here. I think all the guys I have to kill are dead. Jump down here. I don't think there's an easy way down there, so I might have to wait for that elevator. There's a way you can do it and take a little damage, but I'm not going to risk it. I I played this several times. I made sure that it's doable without luck, but one thing you can do to really save some time is, yeah, you can go down this way. By the way, when I get to the point where I'm getting music for the game. I'm going to see if I can find some dramatic music for this, but I need to fix that switch. Oh, I closed it. <laughs> I forgot I'd said it so you can... Uh, the game now saves the states of these doors. Ooh, and that is... We're, we're running low on time. You have to go up to go down. You know what? Ooh, that was not good. But hey, I'm still alive. Okay, cannot fall down that. So I'm gonna go down, down, down. 20 seconds. Let's see, I died three or four times. If you die, that hits the uh, rogue grading. Well, that's not bad. All right. Uh, well, that's all I have for everybody, so I'm going to head out now. Um, as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.